Hello everyone, myself Dr. Meenu, Associate Professor, K.R. Mangalam University. In this lecture, we will be discussing branching programs and control structures in Python. So let us see with the if statements. We have one way if statements, we have two way if statements. In one way if statements, the statement executes if the condition is true. So the syntax for one way if statement is this. If, if is a keyword, then you will write the boolean expression colon. This is the syntax for writing the if statement and after giving some identification, we need to provide the set of statements that you want to execute under this if. Now let us see some example for simple if statements. So number is equal to int input enter an integer. So using this statement we are taking the user input. The user input is always stored in the form of string. So that is why we have to put the int function here to type cast the string value into the integer value. So here we are taking the user input. Now we are checking the condition if the number that you have inputted if it is divisible 5 and the remainder comes out to be 0, if the condition is true, then this particular statement will be printed. If number more 2 divisible by 0, if the number is divisible by 2 and the remainder is 0, in that case, this print statement will be executed. These are the example of one way if statements. We are not doing anything in that case, in the case if the condition turns out to be false. For that, we have two way if statements. In two way if statements, we can decide which particular set of statements needs to be executed. If the condition is true, this is the syntax for if else, if you will write the condition here, boolean expression that you want to check, colon, the set of statement. So this set of statement will be executed if the condition is true. If the condition is false, in that case, else part will be executed. So the syntax for else is else, colon, and under this we have to write the set of statement. For true, if statements, if block will be executed, for false, else block will be executed. Now let us see one example, uh, we'll execute these programs, these simple programs on Google Colab. So this is the first program where, where we are taking the user input and then we were writing the condition. If we will execute this particular program, you can see it is asking for the user to input the number. If I write 15, so high phi, this particular statement is printed because the condition is being checked here if is equal to 0, if the result is 0, in that case high 5 will be printed. If I will check this program, I will execute this program again, I write 16. In this case you can see this first if will be checked, the condition turns out to be false, so this if block is skipped. Now we will be checking the second if block. 16 mod 2, the result of this is 0, the remainder is 0, so high even is displayed on the console. You can see high even is printed as an output. Now, now we have if else, the example of if else the another example of if else statements. In this case, we are taking the user input for the principal amount, the input for time. If the time, value of time is greater than 10, we'll use this particular formula. We will use this formula to calculate simple interest. If the value is less than 10, in the, that case, this particular formula will be used to calculate the simple interest. So again, we will see the output of this program in Google Colab. This is the program here. We'll execute this program and just see. So we are, it is asking for the principal amount. I input value 50, press enter. It is asking for the time. I'm asking, I'm writing 8, the value which is less than 10. In this case, the first if condition will be checked if t is greater than 10. 
in this case this simple interest simple interest will be calculated using this formula otherwise else this formula will be used so in this case i have entered 8 so t is less than 8 so else part will be executed and you will be you will get this output as 60 so in the same way you can enter different value of time and based upon the value of time that particular formula for simple interest will be used for calculation now after this we have apart from one way if one way if statements if else we have nested if and nested if with else also so in this example you can see if i is greater than k if this condition is true the another if inside this this is known as nested if statement if this condition is also turns out to be true then only this statement will be executed if this condition is false in that case this if and nested if will be will not be executed in that case else part will be executed so again we can see the same in our google collab along with the output so here you can see we have we have to enter the value of i for example i is 12 enter value of j value of j is 6 enter value of k which is 56 and then based upon this you will receive the output so i entered i is 12 and k is 56 so i is greater than k no the condition is false here itself so the else part is executed i is less than or equal to k so you can input different values of i and i j and k and check out the output for this program now we have another variation of decision statements if l if else so in this first screenshot you can see we we are using nested if else if score is greater than 90 then the statement else the the entire part is under else if this score is greater than or equal to 80 then the entire part is in else so we are writing if else in a hierarchy so equivalent to this because this here we have to write lot many condition lot many if else and their identification so the, the user may you know uh, face various problems in this case we can use l if so you will give the condition here for example if score is greater than equal to 90 grade will be given a l if here again along with the else here with the else we were not giving any condition now with the l if you can give the condition and the program is simpler as compared to the the, the, uh, the earlier one so if the con if the score is greater than 80 grade b will be given else if again if it is 70 grade c is given again l if if it is 60 grade d will be given if nothing of none of these if and else if are true in that case else part will be executed which is giving f grade now again you can see the execution of this particular program in google collab we have a similar program so here we are entering the mark enter your marks for example i'm enter 55 now you'll see a m is greater than 80 this condition is false so it will go into l if 55 is greater than 60 this condition is also false else if m is greater than 40 this particular condition is true so we will receive you got c grade so as you can clearly see using if l if else is very easy as compared to the use of if else and nested if else now we will uh, will be discussing for loop and while loop 
So, for loop iterates through each value in a sequence. For example, if you want to print or you want to execute the same set of statements again and again, then you do not have to write the code again and again. You can simply iterate through those set of statements using for loop or while loop. In this, in this slide, we are having the syntax of for loop. So, you can see here for, for is for loop, for loop it is a keyword, where, where is a variable that you are iterating through the loop, in again is a uh, keyword and sequence. Sequence is used for, where, for when you are iterating through the list, through the tuple, through the string, then we can use sequences. Otherwise, you can use the another syntax for for is for i in range. Range is a built-in function which will be iterating the value of i from the given range. So, the range is initial value you will provide here, the end value you will provide here. For example, I want to print simply the value from 1 to 10. So, you have to write for i in range 0 to 10. So, it will start from 0 and will go up to 9. So, this end value will be taken up as 10 minus 1 as 9. So, we will see various examples of for loop. Now, we have one of the example program to reverse the given number. Here, we are using while loop. The syntax for while loop is simply similar to for loop. We will use while, we will use condition here, colon, you write the set of statements that you want to execute. So, these set of statements will be executed till, till this condition is true. As soon as the condition is false, you will be come out of the loop. So, here let us do this program using while loop. We have any number 5, 6, 7, 8 or you can take the user input for the number. We want to reverse this number. We want to print it as 8, 7, 6, 5 like this. So, for that what we have done is you have to understand the, <coughs> the logic of the program. The reverse of a number is 0. This we have taken any, any variable and initialized it with 0 value. We have printed the value. The original number is num. Now, while num is greater than 0, this is the condition. Until this condition is true, these set of statements will be executed. Now, what we are doing, how we are reversing the given number. So, what we have to do, we have to extract the individual digit and then we have to add them to make it reverse. So, how do we do that? Now, if I do, if 8, 7, uh, sorry, the number is 5, 6, 7, 8, mode 10, mode will always give you the remainder. So, this will give 8 as remainder. So, in the remainder, the value will be 8. Reversing, this is the formula for reversing a number, reverse number multiply by 10 plus remainder. So, this value initially is 0, multiply by 10 plus remainder is 8 now. So now, in the reverse number, we have got 8. Now, we have to reduce this value, right, so that we can extract 7. So, what we have to do, 5, 6, 7, 8 divide by, uh, sorry, 5, 6, 7, 8 divide by 10. So, this way when you do the division, you get the quotient as a result. So, here the output of this particular statement will be 5, 6, 7. Now, this in the number we are storing 5, 6, 7. Again, we'll go here. We'll check this number is greater than 0. We'll come again here. We'll extract 7 from here. Again, in the reverse, we will what we will do? The, the previous value of reverse number is 8 into 10 plus now the remainder is 7. Now it is 87. Again, now we will reduce the, the number. Now we will get 5, 6, 7 divide by 10. We will get, get 56. Again, we will check 56 is greater than 0. Again, these set of statements will be executed. And in the last, you will get the reverse number. Right? Now, again, we can see the output of this program here. Here you can see the program. So, you can take the user input also for the numbers. See, here you can only see the, the, the given number is this and the reverse of the number is this. 
So, you need to understand the functionality or the logic that we have put under the while block. Now, let us see the another program. This is another program where we are using while loop. So, here program to check if the number is an Armstrong number or not. So, you need to understand what is an Armstrong number. A number is Armstrong number, for example, if the cube of individual digits and the sum of those number, if it come out, comes out to be the original number, then we say that it is an Armstrong number. For example, if I say hmm, 1, 2, 3, so how do we calculate the Armstrong number? 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube if it comes out to be 123, then we say that this is the Armstrong number, otherwise this is not an Armstrong number. So, let us check 1 plus 8 plus 27, is it 123? No. So, this is not an Armstrong number. Here, now uh, we will uh, do the same, you know, we will write the logic for the same program here. We are taking the user input, enter a number the user has entered the number, we have taken a variable sum and initialized it with 0 and now we have taken up a temporary variable to store the original number. So, temp is equal to num, temp will store now what the, num the number that user has input. For example, 371 the user has input, 371. Now, we will check if it is greater than 0, what will happen? Again, we are extracting the individual digits, we are cubing them and adding to the previous number. So, the same thing we are doing uh, as we have done in the previous program, we will uh, extract the individual digits, we will cube it and we will add it to the sum. So, here you can see this, this, these set of statements will be executed until temp remains greater than 0. If the condition is false, you will come out of the program and you will display the result, whatever may be the result. For example, now let us dry run the program. For example, temp, uh, temp is 371, mode 10, 371, mode 10. So, mode will give the remainder. So, here the remainder will be 1. Now, what we will do is, we will cube cube of this digit, right, and we will store into the sum. So, this means sum is equal to sum plus 1 cube. So, sum initially is 0. So, in the sum, we will have this value will have 1, we will have 1. Now, we have to reduce this number because why we need 7 now. So, we will divide here, we are dividing we are dividing temp which is 371 with 10. So, the result will be 7, 37. So, here we will go again 37 is greater than 0, yes it is. So, again we will be extracting 7 from here by more taking modulus, here we will receive 7. Then last value of sum was 3, now 7 cube, right. Then again we will reduce 371, sorry 37 to 3. So, again we will go here 3, uh, 3, 3, 7 divide by 10, you will receive here, sorry we have, we have 37 here, Se uh, the number will be reduced to 3. Okay, all right. Now, again, we'll check 3 is greater than 0. Yes, it is. Then again, the same set of process will be followed. Now, the sum has 1 cube plus 7 cube. Now, it will have 3 cube. Now, we will check. Uh, now, we have 3. 3 again divide by 10. Now, the result will be 0. Now, again, we'll go to the while loop. 0 is greater than 0. The condition will be false and this statement will not be executed. Our program will come here after the if statement. So, here we'll check if num is equal to is equal to sum. If the number, the original number which is 371 and the cube and sum of individual digit, if it is equal to 371, we'll say the number is Armstrong. Otherwise, the number is not an Armstrong number. 
Now let us execute the same program and let us check whether the number is Armstrong number or not. So I have already explained you the process of this program 371. So you can see that 3q plus 7q plus 1q is equal to 371 itself. So that is why this is giving us the, that 371 is an Armstrong number. Now let us check this program again. I am giving 2, 3, 4. So see because the cube of 2q plus 3q plus 4 cube is not equal to 3, 2, 20, 2, 34. That is why we are getting the number is not an Armstrong number. Now we have few more programs here using we are doing these programs using the for loop the python program to display all the prime numbers within the given interval and the another program is fibonacci series up to 10 terms so you can go through these programs you can understand them you can run them you'll be able to understand these programs just for practice i'll explain I can explain you this program display Fibonacci series up to the 10 terms. So what is Fibonacci series? Fibonacci series is nothing but Fibonacci series is nothing but the first two terms of the Fibonacci series is 0 and 1 and the next term will always be calculated by adding the last two terms. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Next term will be calculated by adding these two terms 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, this 13, this 21 and so on. In the same way, in the same way you can keep on uh, printing the Fibonacci series. So here you can see the code, the set of statements or the logic that you have put in for calculating the Fibonacci series. In the same way, in the same way here, now we are printing all the prime numbers within the given range. So here we have taken the range, the lower range is 1, 1 to 50, that means from 1 to 50 we are printing all the prime numbers. Here if the number is what we have to do is do uh, to check whether the number is prime or not. For example, I want to check whether, whether, whether 15 is prime or not. So I have to divide 15 with 2, I have to divide 15 with 3, 15 with 4. Okay. So whenever you get remainder as 0, then you will say here in this case remainder will not be 0, remainder will be 1. So, so we will continue. Here in this case remainder will be 0, remainder will be 0. So here we can declare that the number is not a prime number. So we have to divide the number from 2 to n, right? This n could be anything depending upon the value that you are giving. For example, I am checking that 13 is prime or not. So what we have to do, we have to divide 13 with 2, 13 with 3, 13 with 4, 13 with 5 and so on. If the remainder is not equal to 0, it is not equal, not 0 we will say that the number is prime number. Now we will execute these programs and let us see what output do we get. In this case Fibonacci series, see here <coughs> I am printing the Fibonacci series up to 10 terms. So you can see the output, we have put in the logic here 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 and so on. I have already explained the process that how you are going to calculate the next term while printing the Fibonacci series. This is the program for, for printing the prime number within a particular range. You can see here, here we are getting the list of prime numbers that have been printed within the range from 0 from 1 to 50. You can explore such more programs using the iteration using the for loop and while loop. Thank you so much. That's, that's all for today.